Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I would like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of April 27th, 2023. Uh, Mr. Lining, please take a roll call. Certainly. Would the representative from the Public Works Department please state his or her name for the record? Yasha Franklin Hodge. Property Management Department. Amy Chelfin. Transportation Department. Amy Gordon. Inspectional Services Department. Brian Ronan. Water and Sewer Commission. Denise Devlin. And Disabilities Commission. Daryl Leon. Thank you. Uh, Todd, we have a uh, quorum, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do have a full, full quorum. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, all right. Well, we'll get uh, right to, apologies for the ringing phone in the background. Um, we will get right to uh, our first order of business today, which is hearing minutes at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff. The acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on April 13th, 2023. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the hearing minutes of April 13th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. All right, on to public hearing continued number one on a joint petition by LEB Albany LLC and the Boston Redevelopment Authority, DBA Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Boston proper, vertically above the grades of the sidewalks, Albany Street on its northwesterly side at address number 595, northeast of East Canton Street, East Canton Street on its northeasterly side between Albany Street and Thorn Street. This was new business on March 16th, I had its first public hearing on March 30th, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Vertical Discontinuance Plan, 595 Albany Street, East Canton Street, Boston proper, one sheet dated December 2nd, 2022. Uh, would the proponents please introduce themselves, uh, give us a brief overview of uh, where you're at on the project, and uh, uh, we will go from there. Great. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the project proponent. And also on the hearing is Andrew Broussard, who is the principal of the proponent. Um, we were last before you and sought a continuance to today pending the recording of the order of taking by the BPDA of the air rights which constitute the vertical discontinuance. Um, the BPDA board reauthorized that taking on April 13. The order of taking was signed by the board and recorded with a vertical discontinuance plan that is before you um, at the Registry of Deeds yesterday and I provided a copy of the order of taking with the plan reference for the recording um, to Todd Liming for the record. Um, so all of that has been completed and I believe the only item that you asked about at our initial hearing on the vertical discontinuance related to a raised sidewalk um, question um, on the small private way behind the building, Thorn Street, um, but the only other, um, and I'll get to that in a moment, the only other question you had with, the, with respect to the vertical discontinuance is that the urban design aspects of the building should be consistent with what has been approved through BPDA design review and other processes. And yes, indeed, um, we certainly are going to build the building as approved by South and Landmarks Commission and every other um, board or commission that has approved it to date. Um, Turning to the uh, question of the raised crosswalk along Thorn Street uh, on East Canton Street, um, we took a look at that with our engineer and um, determined that it, it's not really feasible to do a raised sidewalk for a number of reasons. That is the turn into the rear garage entry and that the um, the raised sidewalk, the transition slopes would impede the garage entrance and sort of act like a speed hump. There's also a small um, 
island, a, a separated island that has been uh, put into place on Thorn Street. So there's already there a lot going on there. So instead of doing the raised uh, crosswalk, I think the proposal is just uh, true, if I'm correct, to just paint, uh, paint that condition. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Andrew Broussard. Um, thank you for having me on. Uh, Todd, I don't know if, can you potentially bring up that uh, markup that I sent you this morning that, that shows a transition? Um, and, and I think just, just to jump in here, um, this is likely best discussed in the context of the next action, which is the specific repairs. Um, so uh, we can, I'm uh, fine for us to look at it now, but uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, move forward on the discontinuance piece independent of the discussion on the specific repairs, which comes next. Okay, and okay. I've shared my screen to show, um, just to refresh your memory, perspective view of the building. There is the uh, area of the discontinuance in the front of the building along Albany Street and along East Canton Street, the side of the building represents the vertical discontinuance as shown on the plan. Um, other than that, that, those were the only items um, on the vertical discontinuance. Excellent. Um, commissioners, any comments, questions? Not the uh, fee on East Canton, East of the cities, or for the discontinuance? Is there yeah. a monetary issue on that thing? No, the city owns the fee. Uh, we have the title opinion. Uh, the BPDA performed a taking. I believe Matt Donovan uh, with the BPDA is actually online. If he can attest to everything being settled there. Yes, thank you, Mark. Matt Donovan, Council, Boston Planning and Development Agency. We were able to record the full taking yesterday. So we're all up to speed on that. All right. Uh, other questions, comments from commissioners? And this is the, um, this is the plan itself. Excellent. Uh, PIC staff or members of the public? Um, I'll take this opportunity to remind the public, uh, if you wish to add testimony or ask questions, please use the raise hand function um, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I have no comments on this. I don't see anybody else, so I think we're all set. All right, do I hear a motion to approve? Public hearing continues number one. I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by LPB Albany LLC and the Boston Redevelopment Authority DBA Boston Planning Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Boston proper, Albany Street, East Camp Street is read into record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. On two, public hearing continued. Number two, on a petition by LPB Albany LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following roadways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, and driveway curb cuts. Albany Street at address number 595, northeast of East Canton Street. East Canton Street between Albany Street and Thorn Street. Thorn Street Private Way, northeast of East Canton Street. New business on March 16th, first public hearing on March 30th, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repair plan, 595 Albany Street and East Canton Street, Boston, one sheet dated April 27th, 2023. Uh, would the proponents please reintroduce themselves, uh, thank you for picking up the plan, and uh, talk through any changes, and we can pick up the uh, raised crosswalk uh, discussion uh, here. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the proponent. Also on the hearing is Andrew Broussard, principal of the uh, proponent. Uh, picking up where we left off on the discussion of the raised crosswalk along Thorn Street on East Canton Street behind the proposed new building, and to the left, the uh, new construction, the Smith uh, large residential building. Um, Andrew. Yes, thank you again. So yeah, we took a hard look at this um, and uh, the green lines here represent uh, the, the boundaries of <clears throat> the, the raised sidewalk as, um, as it would need to be uh, implemented per code. Uh, so it's a 10 foot wide uh, crosswalk, as you can see, uh, the seven foot, the Dimension's a little hard to see there, but on either side of those dotted lines, those would be the boundaries of the transitional slopes going from the 
grade of the sidewalk back to elevation grade. That's based off of the BPW detail. It's difficult to know whether or not, that's the minimum dimension. It's difficult to know without the actual spot grades whether or not that would be wider. But just for representation, we put in these lines. And as you can see, the transitional slopes would not only impede pretty far into the East Canton Street streetscape, but also the back of our building. It's a little hard to tell, but we have a garage door on the back of that building that allows access to those three parking spots. And that transitional slope would go pretty far into our entrance there. So it would be very difficult to implement that appropriately. And it would also, in our opinion, would make a very kind of strange maneuvering circumstance where you would be going kind of up over a bump and then down, and you're kind of trying to curve into the garage there. Also, the Smith parking garage is accessed off of Thorn Street as well, and they would need to navigate over that hump and then back into the East Canton Street side. We definitely agree that there should be a pedestrian connection here, well-defined. So instead of the raised sidewalk, we're proposing that we do a new striped crosswalk. There's also, as Mark mentioned, there are two curb islands, so to speak, in the middle of Thorn Street. They don't seem to be serving a large purpose, in our opinion, that I know of. And we think the removal of that, and I ran this by Todd, and he agrees, removing those so that they're kind of out of the way of the crosswalk and just having a nice new striped crosswalk connecting the two new pedestrian ramps would be a good solution. Commissioners, comments, questions, reactions? Could this be designed as a driveway? That was my same comment. Yeah, can this look like a driveway apron? It's just a very long crosswalk for like a nothing street. So like, you know, this should read pedestrian space. And so if the material is cement concrete and it looks like a driveway and you get rid of your grading issues, it should be doing both things appropriately. Yeah, so what would, I'm just trying to be clear, like where would the bounds of the concrete be? Just for the sidewalk? Yeah, so it would look like a continuous sidewalk that had a driveway opening that would be the, you know, whatever this is, Thorn Street. Thorn Street. Oh, I see. So no striping, just... Yeah, no ramps, no crosswalk, just a continuous cement concrete with a, you know, that's got our standard driveway detail on it. Well, if we don't have the ramps, again, we run into the issue of the sloping and the grading because we would have to bring up the grades. You can leave the grades, just make it a different material, right? So that like, this is all, like there are very, there's little grading happening out there right now, right? So like, this is all pretty flat. So I think it's more just that the appearance of it being a continuous sidewalk more so than the elevation changes. Yeah, I'm all for that. I think we'd have to look into whether or not we can actually eliminate the ramps or not based on what the actual grade changes are. So we would have to look into that more. If anything, we might still need a wheelchair ramp and then a continuous concrete sidewalk detail across the street, I think would look nice. Yeah, I mean, we've talked to Sarah about where ramps are appropriate because if this is a continuous sidewalk, you're not entering the road, so we wouldn't have ramps and tactile, but right, like, yes, we're happy to work with you on the grading piece of it just to make it look and feel like a sidewalk. Okay. Yeah, potentially maybe transition down. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. How tight is your grading within your garage? Are you up against kind of a vertical limit or do you have a little bit of flexibility with the elevation of your garage entrance? We're pretty tight with what we can do with the grading because it's based off of the existing grades now where we're setting our slab elevation, which translates to a lot of other design implications. So it would be a challenge to 
do a lot of great changes there. Yeah, like I said, I don't think that this needs to be a big grading effort. It just the smooth cement concrete path through here is what we're looking for. Okay. Yeah, yeah and you know, basically you're going from a speed hub, which is a wider thing, which you need to transition to your garage entrances to an eight foot sidewalk. So your transition area will be much, much smaller and you can take some liberties because you are now on a private way. It is outside the PIC's purview as to those transition slopes from the great height of our sidewalks to meet your interest needs. So I'm 99.9% I'm .9 certain you should be able to handle it uh, to respectable design standards on a private way. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I think if we can make it work, um, we can make it work. And that's, that's a good solution. Other comments, questions from the commission? Uh, PAC staff and members of the public, and I guess maybe there's a question in there for Todd, is do we move forward with this uh, action today uh, and uh, make these uh, discussed adjustments uh, after the fact, or would we like to have the proponents come back uh, with the detail uh, that we just discussed uh, mapped out? Uh, I'm happy to work with the projects offline after the fact um, to, to determine, you know, what's the appropriate design here, um, and I can float it to whoever needs to put eyes on it. Um, I'll leave it to the commission to decide if you'd like to approve, you know, contingent on that being worked out, um, or maybe we need to continue. Uh, yeah, sure. Here, contingent, contingent board should cover it. Excellent. Yeah, if there's no if there's no opposition from the commission uh, for that, uh, happy to make this a contingent vote. Um, Todd, any uh, other comments or questions on the specific repairs plan? Uh, no, uh, they uh, went through a pretty good exercise. Added some uh, curb extensions um, at Albany Street. Uh, they were able to split up those ramps um, so that we have directional ramps: one crossing Albany, one crossing. Um, uh, East Can, so I appreciate the, the efforts that they took there. Uh, they're also adding a tree. I don't know if they mentioned that, but um, pretty pretty good stuff. Um, sorry, I did have an additional comment about the split ramps, and I just wanted to confirm that um, the ramps will not have return curbs. Um, the, they will have wings that are made out of concrete um, just to ensure that they are meeting our city standards for re reconstruction. Okay, yeah, so I can make sure that that's included. Um, I'll instruct the engineer on that. Great, thank you. All right, hearing no other comments, do I hear a motion to approve? Public hearing continued, number two. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by LPB Albany LLC for the making of specific repairs in Albany Street, East Canton Street, and Thorn Street as read and directed by the chair, contingent upon the resolution of the driveway treatment across Thorn Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the time. All right, on to public hearing number one on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs within Cummins Highway and each of its intersecting, intersecting streets, public ways, Dorchester and West Roxbury, located generally between Anafron Street and Fairway Street, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, traffic signal infrastructure, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, landscaping, green stormwater infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, street furniture, bollards, driveway curb cuts, raised crosswalks, median islands, pedestrian railings, and, and separated bike facilities. This was new business on April 13th, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Cummins Highway, Boston, 19 sheets dated April 2023. The proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, uh, give us a brief refresher on uh, this very large project, and uh, let us know about any changes or updates since your uh, last, uh, since your new business hearing uh, on uh, the 13th. Uh, good morning, Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Thomas Jay with Public Works Engineering Division, and today I'll be filling in for the city's project manager, uh, Jeff Alexis. Um, 
Today, we're positioning for the specific repairs on Cummins Highway between Harvard Street and Fairway Street. I'm also designed, uh, joined by our design consultant from Niche Engineering. Um, I'll let Steve introduce himself shortly, but before kicking off to him, I want to provide, again, some background information on this major project um, that will not only re revitalize Cummins Highway corridor, but create this multimodal transportation corridor that improves safety for all modes of transportation. Uh, when this reconstruction project was initiated back in October, uh, 2018, our main focus was to address the speeding and safety concerns along this corridor. In addition to these traffic uh, safety concerns, the roadway and sidewalks were also in need of intention, and we wanted to bring everything up to kind of a good state, a state of good repair. To address all these issues, we wanted to um, take a holistic look at this corridor. Four and a half years later, um, in collaboration with you know many city de departments and the Mattapan neighborhood, We've developed this design that transforms Cummins Highway into a street that is safer for families to walk, uh, wait for the bus, ride bikes, and or travel by vehicle. Also aligned with the city's goals and policies and initiatives, um, we've implementing green infrastructure uh, along the corridor and the project itself will also provide a great bicycle connection from the Southwest Corridor and Franklin Park to the Dorchester and Neponset River Trail, River Trail in uh, Mattapan. Another thing I want to point out, this is a significant investment um, into the uh, loved neighborhood of Mattapan. Lastly, I want to again um, make sure that I mention that the huge, huge credit needs to go out to the Transportation Department and their active transportation team. Um, they're vital in developing the design and most importantly, uh, developing the engagement process and strategy for um, making sure that the uh, ideas and thoughts of the community were involved in this design process. I'll, I'll pass it off to Steve to can go into the design details and specifics on um, our plan. Uh, thank you, Thomas, and uh, good morning, commissioners. I'm Steve Farr, Niche Engineering, Project Manager, and I'll just share my screen here. And all right, can everybody see the Google Earth map? We can. Yeah. Okay. So this is. Um, Again, a map of uh, the location of the project. Uh, Blue Hill Ave here is on the right. This is Mattapan Square. The project starts just west of that at Fairway Street. It continues on Cummins Highway over the MBTA tracks and down through uh, the intersection of Green Greenfield and White Boston. I'll, I'll talk about that more specifically later. And it terminates here at the Wood Harvard Ave intersection, just about 4,600 feet. Again, very large, uh, lengthy project. Uh, the specific repair plans that we've submitted uh, are about 20 sheets. This is one of them. Again, this is a location of, uh, uh, of the greenfield Wybosset cummins Highway intersection. The, the uh, corridor, the, the pavement on the corridor is being reduced from the four lanes it is today to two lanes, one in each direction along with a parking lane. We're introducing a roundabout at this intersection to slow down traffic. And along the corridor, we're moving the curb lines out to provide areas for bioretention areas, green infrastructure, uh, a new separated raised bicycle facility made of porous asphalt, uh, wider sidewalks, street trees, um, and new street lighting, along with minor drainage inputs or modifications. These plans are basically the same that I presented uh, two weeks ago with minor modifications uh, as a result of our conversations last week with Boston Water and Sewer and some comments from Public Works Street Lighting. But other than that, they are very much the same. Uh, I'll take any questions at this time. Commissioners. Oh, good morning. This is Denise Devlin from Boston Water and Sewer. Uh, thank you for addressing uh, the fact that you did have a meeting with the commission. Uh, I did re receive a comment this morning. It's just a general comment. If you can just, you know, address any outstanding comments that we have, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may add a couple of thoughts. I want to publicly Please. acknowledge the wonderful work that has been done through a huge interdepartmental effort uh, hugely participated by our uh, colleagues in the transportation department, the mayor's office of neighborhood services, the parks department, uh, Jeffrey Alexis, who is unable to be here, uh, you know, was a champion on this project. Steve Parr from our consultants, Thomas, chief, this is one of those ones where everyone pitched in and 
extremely happy to say that we are finally there to do something that is absolutely deserving of this amazing neighborhood. So a lot of kudos to a lot of good people. Thank you, Para, and uh, yeah, I want to echo that sentiment. I think this is a, uh, we don't do a lot of projects of this scale uh, in the city, and um, to see something that is uh, both in its design so uh, reflects so many goals and so many uh, benefits for the community that this street serves, um, but also to know that the process uh, that went behind, the, that, that sits behind this design was um, I mean, this has been, as, as noted, many years of work um, in community, really listening to and understanding community needs and reflecting that into a design uh, and uh, bringing people along to sort of understand what's possible when we make um, a, an investment of this scale uh, in a street, in a neighborhood, and, and the impacts and benefits that that can bring. And uh, just very, very appreciative of every member of the team who, um, who got this to this point. And uh, so I want to just note that. Um, any other questions, comments uh, from the commission? All right, uh, PAC staff or members of the public? No, we're all set on this. Well, with that, do I hear a motion to approve? Public hearing number one. I will happily make a motion to approve a petition for specific repairs on Cummins Highway as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? So moved. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that takes us through our public hearings for today, but on to new business. Uh, so our first new business item is Calumet Street, New Business 1, uh, Calumet Street, uh, Pequot Street, Darling Street, Roxbury, specific repairs and a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Uh, would the proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and give us an overview of what you are proposing? Uh, good morning, Chairman and members of the Commission. My name is Thomas Jay with the Public Works Engineering Division. Uh, today we're positioning for specific repairs at Calumet Street, at Pequot Street, and Darling Street in Roxbury. I'm also joined by our design consultant from GPI, Michael Doobie. Um, this project is part of the Neighborhood Safety Project uh, Program, which looks to improve safety on local streets throughout Boston um, with targeted treatments at specific intersections and corridors. Um, for this project location, Public Works, in close co collaboration with BTD and listening to concerns of the surrounding neighborhood, is looking to focus on improving pedestrian safety and the with the reconstruction of pedestrian ramps and curb bumplets at this location. Um, the project also has other improvements um, with new street lighting and green infrastructure to meet city goals and policies. I'll let Mike from GPI introduce himself and go into the further design details on the project now. Thank you, Thomas, and good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Mike Doobie, I'm with GPI, and I will be presenting specific repairs for the Calumet, Pequot Street, and Darling Street intersection in Roxbury. Um, I'll just share my screen real quick. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Perfect. Um, so this project is part of the Neighborhood Safety Program, um, as indicated by Thomas. Uh, the project proposes to improve pedestrian safety at this location um, by providing curb bump outs that minimize pedestrian crossing distances. They minimize the existing pavement footprint um, and promote safety through those elements. Uh, the bump outs are proposed along all four corners of the intersections with new pedestrian ramps, new sidewalks, and additional green infrastructure um, with the additional open space provided by the bump outs. The project is also proposing to install new underlying underground lighting infrastructure to align with the new curb lines um, and as a whole promote safety within the intersection, intersection for pedestrians. Um, I'll open it up to questions at this point. Commissioners. Hearing nothing. PIC staff and members of the public. All set. All right. Well, with no uh, further comment, do uh, we be ready for your public hearing in two weeks on May 11th? Yes, we will. Yep. 
All right, excellent. Well, we will see you back uh, then. Thank you very much. And on to new business number two, Rock Hill Street, Wenham Street, West Roxbury, specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Would the petitioners please reintroduce themselves and give us an overview of what is being proposed here. Uh, good morning, Chairman and member of the Commission again. Uh, my name is Thomas, uh, Public Works Engineering. Um, and for this one, uh, we are at uh, Walk Hill Street and Wenham Street in Jamaica Plain. Um, and today I'm joined, sorry, excuse me, I'm joined by our design council again, uh, Michael Doobie from GPI. Uh, this project again is another one of the neighborhood safety program. Um, and it's looking to do the same um, types of safety improvements at specific locations. Uh, for this project, Public Works, uh, again, in close correlation with BTD and the surrounding neighborhoods, um, we're looking to Im implement um, pedestrian safety improvements with the reconstruction of ramps, providing curb bump outs, and adding um, some raised crossings at this intersection. Um, again, also with these improvements, we're looking to add some street lighting and green infrastructure as well. I'll let Mike go into the further details on the design now. Thank you, Thomas, and good morning, Commissioners. Mike Doobie with GPI, um, presenting the specific repairs at Wenham Street and Walk Hill Street in West Roxbury. Um, I'll just share my screen again. Um, so as Thomas mentioned, uh, this project is part of the uh, Neighborhood Safety Improvements Program that the city is implementing, provide pedestrian safety at intersections um, we're proposing new curb bump outs to minimize the um, existing pavement footprint and minimize crossing distances. The bump outs are proposed along the northern corners of Wenham Street, as well as along the south side of, or west side of Walk Hill Street. Um, within these bump outs, we propose raised crossings as well for traffic coming. Um, we've proposed additional um, green infrastructure improvements with the space, new pedestrian ramps and new concrete sidewalks and new underground lighting infrastructure to align with the new curb lines. Overall, these improvements provide safer intersections for pedestrian and provide traffic coming within the area. I'll open up the floor to questions. Commissioners. I also want to comment just to say that these are right, like long standing requests by the community uh, and we couldn't achieve the appropriate uh, level of safety improvements without some real geometric changes. Um, we, you know, we only get to chase a certain amount of these a year. Uh, these are, are definitely uh, long asked for, uh, much desired uh, changes that I, I think that we've been, been looking at for a while. So um, more just context on, on what we got going here. Appreciate that, Amy, and acknowledging too that this change also is uh, uh, quite proximate to the BTU school uh, and will provide a safer crossing at Walk Hill for students who are traveling to and from school. So, important work. Commissioners, any other comments, questions? Uh, PIC staff, members of the public? We're good. All right. Uh, will you be ready for your public hearing in two weeks on May 11th? Yes, we will. All right. Excellent. We'll see you then. On to new business number three, Weld Street, Maple Street, Pomfret Street, West Roxbury. Specific repairs and a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Uh, would petitioners please reintroduce themselves and give us a brief overview of what's being proposed? Uh, good morning, Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, my name is Thomas Jay with the Public Works Engineering Division, uh, petitioning for the specific repairs of Whale Street and Maple Street in West Roxbury. I'm also designed by our design consultant from GPI, Michael Duby. Um, again, this project is another one of the neighborhood safety program um, that's looking to improve local streets throughout Boston with these targeted uh, specific uh, repairs and uh, treatments at intersections and or corridors. Uh, for this project location at Public Works uh, in close correlation with BTD and again listening to the concerns of these neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods, um, we're looking to improve pedestrian safety with the reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, providing some curb bump outs and adding raised intersection, uh, raised crossings at this intersection. Um, this, also, this project again also has other improvements such as street lighting and green infrastructure. Um, I'll let Mike introduce himself and go into the further design details now. Thank you, Thomas. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Mike Dew with GPI, uh, presenting specific repairs at Bell Street, at Maple Street, and Pomfret Street. And I will share my screen now. Um, 
Um, this project is part of the neighborhood safety program, um, proving uh, safety improvements for pedestrians at this intersection. Um, the project proposes curb bump boats that minimize the pedestrian crossing distances and minimize the existing pavement footprint to promote traffic calming and pedestrian safety. Um, the bump boats um, in this location are um, significant along Maple Street and Wall Street. Um, they provide new sidewalks, new pedestrian ramps, raised crossings, and space for green infrastructure and bio retention areas. Um, the project also proposes new underground lighting infrastructure. I do also want to point out that there are two bus stops with the MBTA within this intersection. I've been incorporated um, one on the west side of Maple Street on the north side of Wall Street, and then one at the southeast corner as well, uh, Walden Maple Street. Um, and those are accounted for in the design and coordinated with the MBTA. Um, and overall, this project promotes pedestrian safety within the area and more coordinated with the community um, and provi provides a safer intersection for all. Well, look forward to questions. Commissioners. Questions or comments? PIC staff or members of the public? We're good here. All right. Uh, seeing no other comments, uh, will you be ready for your public hearing in two weeks on May 11th? Yes, we will. Wonderful. We will see you back uh, then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On to new business number four, 85 West Newton Street, Boston proper, pedestrian easement, specific repairs on a set of petitions by IBA Real Estate Support Corporation. Would the proponents please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and uh, give us an overview of uh, your project. Uh, hi, I'm Jessica Bowman. I'm the Chief Legal Officer for IBA Real uh, this project, which is Ibas Casa, or Center for Arts, Self-Determination and Activism. My name is Vanessa Calderon Rosado, Chief Executive Officer of Iba. And Iba is, uh, or stands for Inclusión Públicos en Acción, a nationally recognized community development corporation uh, that has 667 units of affordable housing in its portfolio, along with five community programs that include early education programs, youth development, residence services, uh, financial empowerment, and the arts. Our proposed project today that we're presenting uh, at the CASA, Center for Arts, Self-Determination and Activism, will provide flexible, well-equipped space for advancing EVA's program and mission, and will continue to serve uh, the residents of Villa Victoria, uh, EVA's primary community, um, affordable housing community, as well as members of the at-large South End community and the city. The, this will happen by expanding not only our programs, but also providing uh, an enhanced space for Latinx arts and culture in the city and in the South End. So today we're presenting uh, some of the um, improvements that are proposed with the project in terms of pedestrian access and uh, easement uh, for, for the project and specific repairs. So I will turn it over now here from our team, our uh, Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering, Michael Schackbacker from uh, Studio NA Architects, and Nina Schwalschild from Schwalschild Consulting, who is also our project manager. I will turn it over now to Chelsea to um, uh, present to you the proposed improvements. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good morning, everyone. Chelsea Christensen from Niche Engineering on behalf of the Build Real Estate Group. Um, we are proposing specific repairs and a pedestrian easement for 85 West Newton Street. Um, for context, we are located in this um, currently demolished building location between Tremont Street and Shulman Avenue. This, we are also adjacent to O'Day Playground, which is, uh, this is the view looking towards the north at the proposed building. The specific repairs that are proposed are uh, replacement of the existing brick sidewalk with a new brick sidewalk. Uh, we are in the South End Landmark District. 
the uh, walkway within the public way will be approximately five feet wide and we have a pedestrian easement that's approximately four feet wide for a total sidewalk width of uh, about nine feet as you go across the new building. We have a three foot wide furnishing zone um, along the back of the curb with forest brick pavers and bike racks. Um, the existing trees located in these trees pit, tree pits will remain and be protected during construction. Um, we are still working with um, looking at opportunities for green infrastructure, possibly angling these bikes um, and trying to figure out where some additional green infrastructure can fit, but we'll be continuing to work with all interested parties on that. Um, that is the extent of these specific repairs. I will go back to, uh, this is a close up of it. Oh, so um, this would be the forest paver strip with bike racks and existing trees to remain. Um, city standard brick paving uh, along the walkway and this is reclaimed the granite along the building edge. Excellent. Uh, commissioners, questions, comments? Hi, Chelsea. Um, just to confirm that the city standard brick will be the wire cut brick. Yes. Correct. Great. Thank you. And I was actually able to confirm that um, they make the porous pavers that match them in the same color and everything. So we've got all that uh, in the documents. Fantastic. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Uh, PAC staff or members of the public? Uh, will that building overhang um, encroach above the proposed easement area, Chelsea? It will be over the easement, yes. Okay, but not over the um, property line? Correct. Okay, um, can you just show a section view on your easement plan just so that we see how high that is? Um, and we'll want to ensure that the building isn't going to be, you know, dropping icicles or anything like that on people's heads. Okay. All right, seeing no other comments or questions, uh, will you be ready for your public hearing on May 11th? Yes, we will. Might as well, thank you. Well, thank you so much, and we're excited to see you back in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, on to uh, new business number five, 80 West Broadway, A Street, South Boston, vertical discontinuances, specific repairs, projection license, earth retention license, and a set of petitions by 80 West Broadway operator LLC. Petitioners, please introduce themselves, their affiliations, and walk us through this project. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? We can, good morning. Great. So we have today our team, um, Stantec. We are the architects of, of record on this project. Um, Marissa from Niche Engineering is our civil engineer, and she'll be sharing her screen with the presentation. And we also have uh, Sean Singer from Copley Welfare Landscape Architects, and we have Jared Agerman, our legal um, consultant as well. Um, we're here representing 80 West Broadway. Um, Shorenstein is our client. And 80 West Broadway is a five-story office with retail activation on the ground floor. You guys may have noticed that this is at the corner of West Broadway and A Street. So we are maintaining the facade of the existing Amrines building, three-story, four-story facade. And we're working on sort of activating this area of West Broadway, improving the public realm and the streetscape. And I believe, Sean, Sean, do you want to speak a little bit about the materials and the plantings plan? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sidewalk materials uh, throughout the project are, uh, are all uh, room finished concrete, scored uh, uh, joints, saw joints there. Uh, we do have uh, the ability to widen the sidewalk slightly. That was one of the things we heard through the, uh, the IAG 
the community process along A Street. So we were able to gain about a foot, I believe about maybe a foot and a 15 or a foot and three inches, around around 15 inches. So slightly wider, but uh, getting that to be more comfortable and more safer uh, pedestrian edge along A Street. And then likewise, we've been working with uh, uh, the city staff all along uh, West Broadway with the introduction of a raised bike uh, lane along the uh, along the edge of West Broadway with a buffer strip running between the uh, the street and the bike lane, and then as you move back to the the feature strip, there is one existing tree that would be on the the far right that is staying just beyond our property line, and then we have the introduction of four new street trees along the uh, the remaining edge of West Broadway, uh, with the addition of uh, four bikes uh, for visitor bike parking introduced into that feature strip area as well. And then, like you're seeing right in the center there, would be the proposed location of a, a blue bike station there as well. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of covers where we're at. I'll pass it over to uh, Marissa. Sure. So I'm just going to skip to the specific repair petition, if that's okay. Um, Marissa Valentino with Niche Engineering. So as Elizabeth and Sean mentioned, the project site is located at the corner of A Street and West Broadway. The project will be proposing new sidewalk along A Street. The sidewalk existing is under five feet. Uh, proposed would be about seven and a half feet wide, um, a new bike lane, as well as accessible ramps at the two corners of A Street and West Broadway. Um, as you move around the corner to West Broadway, um, There'll be some new street trees, four new street trees, blue bike station. Uh, the pedestrian portion of the sidewalk is approximately uh, 12 feet wide, and the green strip paper, the street trees are four feet wide. We are still working with green infrastructure on introducing some uh, opportunities for green infrastructure on the project. Um, there is one driveway curb cut located on the eastern side of the site. This uh, vehicular concrete paving area, it is approximately 18 or 18 feet wide. Um, along the entire frontage of West Broadway is a five foot raised bike lane. As it tapers to the east, um, it is four feet wide to allow for uh, car doors in this area. There's, there's a couple loading spaces. Um, and new street lights, street light locations with the new, um, with the new curb alignment. So with that, I would say, are there any questions on the specific repairs? Hey, Marissa, just really quickly, yeah. just as we look at the hatch patterns, you're kind of reading on the plan there. The, uh, the linear diagonal lines that are behind the street trees are uh, uh, basically as, as the zones of structural soil. So it's not something you'll see from the surface, but underground would be uh, definitely an environment to help with those street trees to be able to perform over time. But from the, the surface, and I'm seeing Sarah nodding her head, the, uh, the sidewalk will be a uh, continuous broom finished uh, sidewalk or uh, concrete. It's the clarifying. Thank you. Um, I will start with one question uh, just related to the, on the, the northeast corner of uh, A and Broadway. Um, you are showing a new uh, pedestrian ramp that seems to be sandwiched in between an existing traffic signal pole and the catch basin. Um, the catch basin is a granite, has a granite top and manhole uh, uh, on the sidewalk zone. And so I'm, I'm just interested in understanding kind of to what extent we fully confirm ADA accessibility of this and what work is intended as you protect and maintain that catch base and how those wings uh, for the ramp are anticipated to work with that granite uh, structure that's there today. Sure, so, so the existing catch basin is located outside of the pedestrian zone. Um, and Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking about the north uh, east corner, uh, which you may be speaking to, but the cursor was pointed at the south uh, east corner. So, uh, yeah, right up uh, there and uh, the crossing uh, across West Broadway. 
So yes, to sir. your right, slightly down West Broadway. Uh -huh. So we are gonna we'll look a little closer at that area to confirm that it needs ADA. Get back to you. Yeah, it's actually okay. if you keep going to the other side of the ramp, there's a like a Bradley head that is right where you are transitioning back down from the bike lane into the crosswalk. And this one head. Yeah. That, and that is what I'm exactly. referring to. Yeah. So that's yeah. a catch basin that is a much right like the structure is in the sidewalk and the catch basin is in the street um so like it, it's a water and sewer thing but I, I do not believe it can stay in that condition and meet the grading uh and the ramp that you have proposed sure we, yes we will definitely we can look further into that let me stop and just oh, good, sorry. Uh, sorry for, for, uh, for, go, go, go ahead parents you want to follow up on this point please yeah uh Marisa, to follow up on the chief's thought patterns in that corner. Marisa, I, I, whenever I look at a set of plans like this, I try and look at it from the end user, end user of the crosswalk. Today you have a crosswalk that sort of aligns with the natural flow of pedestrian traffic along the path. Whenever it gets skewed for whatever the design considerations, I'm always a little bit uh, troubled, but I'm hopeful that you can work with Sara Leon from our commission to see if you can sort out the challenges in the northeast corner, because if you look at the south west corner, you know, the other side, the receiving end, uh, I don't know whether there are ramps, there better be ramps. Okay, so again, I will let Sarah uh, lead that conversation, but try your best to align the crosswalks so that they are not skewed, because Boston has a collection of skewed crosswalks simply because we were not very imaginative in how to manage the ramps, okay? And it is kind of embarrassing when you see lots of other cities manage the situation that still conforms with one United States Americans with Disabilities Act. So do your best to not punish the wheelchair user or the pedestrian uh, simply because you are skewing the duration of crossing, if I make any sense to you. Excuse me. Yes, we'll work with We'll work with Sarah on this alignment. and I know that Thanks. the project across the street is is under development as well. So we can we can work on that. Um, just a second question for you: Can you sort of talk through, um, you know, given that this is a corner pro property, um, the decision to locate the driveway uh, on West Broadway rather than A Street, and just um, how you anticipate that driveway being used, what kind of volumes, what is it serving in your building? Sure, so I can't, I can't speak to the exact volumes, but the, the driveway accesses a parking garage um, as well as internal loading. Yeah, so I can speak to the volume. The, the volume is very small, it's very limited, it's only, um, it's less than 23 spaces on the site and we are using stackers, right? So I, we, we anticipate that it will be for some office employees, um, but not for the whole building, right? And the decision to locate it on the Broadway side of the project, do you have any sort of thoughts or insights onto that? Yeah, we do. Um, on A Street, it's it's a very tight site, as you know. Um, we fought pretty hard to get the extra one and a half feet of sidewalk on that pedestrian side. There is also an active turn lane on the A Street side into West Broadway, and so there wasn't enough maneuverability for truck turning maneuvers. Um, as well as there's significant grade uh, changes on the A Street side as well. We have a partially below grade basement on that side and partially below grade ground floor on that side. Excellent. Thank you very much for clarifying yeah. those points. Can you send um, the oh. yeah, can you send the layout of the, the garage with the stackers? We just want to make sure that you have room to house people who are waiting for stacking. Sure. Yeah, and I believe that has that has been sent to um, ETD with the with the approved tap up plan as well. All right. I'll find yeah. it. Commissioners, other questions, comments?
Did I see staff, members of the public? Um, on A Street, there's an existing void uh, beneath the sidewalk as an area way. Um, I believe you have it called out as uh, to be filled in. Um, I would just, A, like to um, have you confirm that there are going to be no more hollow sidewalks um, at the end of this project, that they're all going to be filled in. Uh, and B, um, you're going to need to coordinate with Public Works' construction management team as to the appropriate materials and all of that um, for filling that in. And, and I can help you with that outreach, but. Great, thank you, yes. Yeah, the intent the intent is to, to fill that existing void and we'll work with uh, Public Works. And that's the only hollow sidewalk that we have here, to your knowledge? That, that is the only one that we are aware of, yes. There's the rub. Thank you. That means the ballers get to go too, right? Yes. All right, seeing and hearing no other comments or questions, uh, will you be ready for your uh, public hearing on May the 11th? Yes. All right, thank you very much. We will see you back in two weeks. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you want me to go through the other three petitions or? I'm sorry, yes, I uh, would actually be excellent if you guys uh, if you can review. That's I okay. did not realize we had not seen all of this, so please go ahead. No problem. Um, I, I think the other ones are um, a vertical discontinuance. Um, as mentioned previously, this is at the corner of A Street and West Broadway, so that existing, a portion of that existing facade um, is intended to remain. Um, there are bump out, existing bump outs at the bay windows that uh, this vertical discontinuance would um, clarify. Oh, and so the current condition of that is that they are simply built out over the public right of way without any formal documentation uh, to uh, approve that, is that the idea? Correct, yep. Okay. Yeah, we weren't around in 1890, uh, this body. <laughs> Not the fee associated with the discontinued area has that entered into the conversation? Yeah, so they've submitted a title opinion, um, and the results are that the, they actually own the fee interest in the land here. Um, so they have commissioned a appraisal, uh, and they're working on that. I, I think they expect to have that all um, finished up by the public hearing. Jared may be able to speak to that a little bit more eloquently, but uh, they'll be paying us for those discontinued discontinuance areas. Yes, indeed, that we've, we've hired an, an appraiser and uh, it will be ready in advance of May 11th. Thank you, gentlemen. Truly appreciate that. Are you keeping the building mounted lights as well? No, I don't, I don't think that the intent is to have them remain. Yeah, we had talked about that. I told them to include that on the projection license plan, but I, I was told at that time that the intention is to remove them, so. All right, seeing no other comments or questions on uh, this uh, action, uh, I'm gonna move on to the next action. Sure. The next action is a projection license. Um, this is for two removable canopies located along West Broadway. Um, the, the first canopy is about 60 square feet of area in the public way, and the second is about 61 square feet in the public way. Um, they're both self-draining self and provide 10 feet, five inches of uh, clearance to the sidewalk. Questions, uh, commissioners, comments? All right, and I believe you have one more action. Yes. Well, the last, um, Petition is for uh, for an earth retention license for um, temporary supportive excavation. Um, this is apologies, I don't have this. There it is. Um, so this this would be a soldier pile and temporary lagging along West Broadway to allow for the construction of the new building. Marissa, can you show the cut shape for the height? 
Party. And again, for the record, you are cutting it. Uh, what? Live. Yes. The, the next sheet? Yeah. Are the files no. are to be remaining, or are you, are you going to cut it at a certain depth? Can you just verbalize that for me, please? Um, I will yeah. get back to you. I will have to get yeah. back to you on that, unless Elizabeth can answer. Sorry, Marissa. Yeah, I think the intent is the soldier pile lagging will be cut six feet below grade when finished. There's a note on the plans. Um, yeah. Clarifying as such. All right. Um, any other questions or comments on this uh, or any of the other uh, actions that were uh, reviewed? All right, hearing none, uh, just to confirm again that you will be ready for your uh, public hearing in two weeks on May 11th. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll see you uh, in two weeks. Thank you very much, Thank you. And on to our final item for today, New Business 6, uh, 380 Stewart Street, Boston Proper, Earth Retention, Crane Pad License, and a petition by SCB 380 Stewart LLC. Uh, would the proponents please introduce themselves and give us a overview of what you are hoping to do. Oh, good morning. I uh, hope you can see my screen. Uh, this is John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, and with me is Cassandra Silva from Skanska, as well as Larry Bagnini from Skanska. The, uh, we were here back in November for specific repairs and vertical discontinuance, so this is just a reminder where the site is, 380 Stewart Street, between Berkeley and Clarendon Street. And at the end of the day, we'll have a nice new building, uh, office building that looks like this. Um, but today's actions focus more on how to construct that building. And we are here before you, as my computer spins, to ask for a supportive excavation temporary crane pad approval. There was a support, supportive excavation was approved back in 2017, and we're looking to amend that permit to allow for the installation of a crane pad and a, um, a hoist bed. The, the, pad, the crane pad will be uh, approximately 20 feet by 20 feet, and the, and the hoist pad will be about eight and a half feet by eight and a half feet, constructed in the sidewalk, but also within the travel way. Uh, the crane pad itself will be approximately six feet in depth on micro piles, and at the end of the day, it will be removed to 10 feet below the surface of the traveled way and six feet below the surface of the sidewalk. But I've been assured that the concrete will be removed in its entirety. And then for the hoist pad, much smaller, uh, simply it's a, a two foot deep concrete pad that's eight by six by eight by six. And this is located entirely within the sidewalk. This is where the crane pad is, and this is where the hoist pad is. Um, the, uh, the, we've sent out the notifications to the 22 different agencies and utilities and received feedback. Um, there's been no objections to this work. There's been some questions about the electrical feeds that are here. These feeds presently serve the building that to be removed. Um, so they can be abandoned and removed and abandoned and removed as needed for the construction of the hoist bed. Um, that, do I have any questions? John, if you could remind the commission members and those who are listening on the pedestrian circulation on Stewart Street that abuts your project, how are you handling the pedestrian traffic? During so there is a as far as during construction, um, there is a construction management plan that Skanska has worked through, and they are on the line if they can speak to how pedestrian access will be provided during construction. Um, I look to them. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, hi, John. There might be a little feedback. I'm going to go with you, Kelsey. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Larry Bagnini. Uh, there is a uh, CWP that uh, have been approved um, uh, by uh, the Boston Transportation Department. Um, we don't have it here to share. We can share it. Um, wasn't uh, uh, expecting to share that information at this meeting, but we do have it, and it's been approved. Um, we are, uh, Larry, sorry, yep. Larry, uh, can you just amplify if I'm walking down Stewart Street, at which point will I be forced to cross Stewart Street to the other side? 
Sure, you be more... by the time you put the claim, I doubt you want any pedestrian. Right, right. right. Okay. Good, good okay. questions. So in, in the broadest terms, yeah, uh, I think the committee members may want to have some understanding as to how yeah. the pedestrians that are supposed to be using that sidewalk uh, will not want to interact with a nice crane pad. So you can just question. speak to that, please. You bet, you bet. So uh, the, the upper left-hand corner of that uh, previous, uh, John, if you can get back there. So at that point, uh, there, uh, the Clarendon Street Apartments, there'll be a crosswalk that crosses the, uh, 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 yep, yeah, right there where you were showing your cursor, that redirects uh, pedestrians that, uh, that would like to cross uh, Stewart at that point. And in addition to that, for those that want to continue down Stewart Street, we will have overhead protection um, uh, and, a, and a designated uh, uh, travel path on the road, right adjacent, right north of that blue line. So yes, right as you're, so for those that want to continue down, they, they, they cross over that, that little alley driveway and there's overhead protection and they uh, right uh, sort of north of that blue line to continue down Stewart Street. But as I indicated earlier, there is also at that corner, a crosswalk that sends the pedestrians uh, uh, if they choose to cross Stewart Street. So just to clarify, you're intending to maintain pedestrian uh, flow on both sides of Stewart Street during this That's, construction phase. That is correct. And can you just articulate a little bit of what, if any, implications that has for the road cross section in terms of uh, parking, travel lanes, bike lane, how, how will that play out? Sure, uh, on the uh, Stewart Street across from the uh, current building, we have uh, taken offline the, the street parking along that sidewalk. So basically that lane uh, shifts, shifts north. And uh, so all the um, off-street parking, yep, around there. Thank you, Jim. Gets taken, uh, gets taken offline. Um, and uh, new striping, um, a new crosswalk striping, new traffic striping will be added. Uh, the 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 uh, parking uh, meters will be bagged. So those are some of the other uh, items included again in the, in the approved CNP TMP. I believe there's a number of accessible spaces on both sides of the street at this in this area. How are those, if there's changes being made to the parking, how are those being handled? I believe we shipped there, them. They're 100% are being relocated. relocated. I trust that you've coordinated um, with the Disclosed Commission for those relocations, correct? The the relocations yeah. of the accessible parking spaces. Um, it's gone through BTD uh, approval, so whether or not. Uh, yeah, the spots need to go through Sarah. So uh, where they're where they're going, um, and and the it, ensuring that we get them back is, I think, the bigger piece of this because uh, we often move for construction and getting them back where they're supposed to be is the the larger portion of that. So whatever you gave to BTD uh, should also go to Sarah um, for that relocation. And Chief, to answer your question, right, like the whole thing pushes out. We had bike lanes, parking go away. We have 10 and a half foot travel lanes and a five foot walk lane on their side. And the bike lanes turn to Sheriff's. Got it. Thank you. Larry, I'm happy to um, put down my contact information in the chat if that's helpful. Um, and we can coordinate offline if um, any continuing conversations. Thank you. I can help make that connection too, if that's useful. Any other questions, comments from uh, PSC staff, members of the public, commissioners? All right, hearing none, uh, are we ready to come back in two weeks on the 11th? You will. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, we are at the end of our agenda. So uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.